Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in Providence, Rhode Island with Fake Mike Real News as he is doing some investigating. Investigating of what? I have no idea. I mean, he says he's investigating the DCYF, which is apparently the Rhode Island Department of Children, Youth, and Families, where he makes a, a few wild claims and wants people arrested, even though, well, we shouldn't really go on his word for anything, because, you know, he's a, well, not exactly the most reliable source of information. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. What are you guys up to today? Trolling? Yep, nice. That's what we're doing. We'll be Good. Downtown. Good. What? Is your jurisdiction only on actions of foot patrol? Do you guys also, if a, if a corrupt politician was breaking the law, would you guys have to arrest them as well too? Whoa, whoa, dude. Slow down a bit. Uh, you're asking the wrong questions. Now, ask him if, they, if there was a... Uh, if there was a politician committing crimes in front of them, such as speeding or anything like that, would they be able to do anything about it? That is the proper question. The question that you are about to ask is really above their pay grade, so why even bother asking them when you should be going up the chain of command anyway to find out that information? Depends how we find out his well, I could give you, I could give you evidence. For example, for example, uh, DCYF. What's going on with DCYF? Well, I could I could send you some information on that. I've I've unfortunately tried to uh, rectify the situation. According to the former head of DCYF on April 4th of this year, she said that 20 to 25 children go missing every single day under DCYF care, and those are obviously the people we pay to protect the kids. And when she was questioned by Rep. Quachochi, well, how many don't come back? She said she didn't know. Nobody has gotten fired over this. Nobody has went to jail over this. And it's their job. I mean, that's just one out of many examples. Obviously, there's... Well, let's get to that first point of yours that about the question that was asked of her. How many children are returned every year? Uh, yeah. And she said she didn't know. Well, in uh, certain circles... Answering the question with, I don't know, is probably the most honest thing you can do. That way, it doesn't sh come back and bite you in the ass later on when you are confirmed to be mistaken. Because unlike frauditors, many people try to be honest when it comes to questions like that. And when it comes to the uh, missing children overall, that's just... Uh, the way things are. Children disappear all the time. They come back or uh, they go missing for years on end and come back and sometimes they're never found. And children can go missing for various reasons. It's not just kidnapping but they'll wander off or all sorts of other things. And yeah, sometimes things happen. So William, stop trying to lay the blame on a single individual for this problem that's been going on well, since time began. Campaign problems with Ramundo. There's ethics violations with Ramundo and a whole host of other things. So I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody's on the equal playing field. We're all holding our oath to the Constitution and holding it applicably, not just against the quote unquote lower members of society, but also the people that are on the higher end. Uh, dude, why are you questioning, uh, the beat cops on these particular complicated questions because these are the questions best left up to higher ranking detectives who job it is to investigate these crimes and with the campaign uh, violations that is generally not left up to the beat cops on the street either there are other committees out there that take care of that because there's i'm sure a lot of sensitive material that's got to be taken care of with specialized people you dumbass it's called division of labor specialized people doing specialized 
tasks. Try to learn that. That's how things work. You also have to understand, as a patrol officer, we don't have the same level of authority as, per se, the detective, who would sure. be the one to go into that, right? Sure. Right. So if you do want to, like, get more into that investigation, you should definitely talk to a detective. I followed up with a number of people uh, with Providence Police as well as the state police. They, uh, I was actually assaulted on video, and they laughed it off. They don't really care. The people that were following up cared more, cared more about the thin blue line than doing it. They basically laughed me off, even though I had something on video. It was a sexual assault, and they didn't care about it at all. They kind of just laughed it off, just because I'm somebody that sticks up for my First Amendment rights and looks into what's going on with DCYF and so forth. How were you sexually assaulted on camera, dude? If you were holding the camera and somebody walked up to you, what exactly did they do to you? I mean, if they looked at the footage and just laughed you off, uh, well, uh, I'm sure it must have been nothing. Maybe they touched your camera or something like that because you uh, frauditors are really sensitive about people touching your camera. I mean, is your camera a uh, extension of yourself to the point where it be has become a phallic object to you? I mean, is that it? I'm sure that's got to be it. Yeah. I, I apologize for that. No, that's cool. Your name? I'm Debbie. Debbie. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for being cordial. Your name and your badge number, sir? Google, 543. Thank you. Okay, I guess that's the end of the video, but wait, there's a little bit more here, and it involves the title he gave to this particular video, which is a bit concerning right here, considering that he called this a First Amendment audit, and he considered it a fail. So, let me ask you something. How was this a First Amendment audit? Because, well... It didn't seem to fall in with anything that an audit normally does, uh, such as being antagonistic or anything like that. The, all you did was just ask some stupid-ass questions that, uh, well, you could have found out online anyway. And second of all, how is this a fail of any kind on a, a First Amendment audit if there was no First Amendment audit, dude? I mean, this just makes absolutely no sense. But then again, you think you're the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard anyway, which is, well, quite, quite insane to begin with. So that's just par for the course with uh, fake Mike Real News. I've always suspected he was just a little bit more unstable than the standard First Amendment auditor to begin with, and, well, every time I watch one of his videos, it just seems to confirm that for me. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.